certain strange at first, even frightening. Something that seems normal to us, the clock ticking on the mantelpiece, would have seemed like a magician's trick a few hundred years ago. Mr. Harrison, we have asked you here to acquaint you with the resolutions of this board. We find that the Jamaica trial recently undertaken was not sufficient to determine the longitude at sea laid down by Act of Parliament. Yes, sir, I beg to uh, differ please with Please let me finish, Mr. Harrison. The board therefore wishes to instigate a further trial with Mr. Harrison or some suitable individual accompanied by an astronomer approved by the board to witness the observations. Uh, gentlemen, at our last meeting, you questioned the observations taken by myself in Jamaica. Since then, I have compiled an extensive report Prepared at Greenwich. Now, please don't exert yourself, Mr. Harrison. The board has withdrawn the objections to your observations. Then why did we fail? One trial of the watch proves nothing. The results may have been chance alone. And besides, the board is not satisfied that the true longitude of Jamaica is known and feels, therefore, that a proper evaluation is impossible. But you knew that all along. May I see the results of these computers? I don't think so, do you? No, I, I'm afraid not. I mean, that would require their individual permissions, and we don't have that at the moment. Now, I must ask you, Mr. Harrison, whether you would accept the resolution of this board for a further trial accompanied by an official astronomer. Maritime museum's a marvelous idea. And the perfect place for Harrison's masterpieces. We've already written to the Science Museum to tell them that we want them back. They were not pleased, I can tell you. In fact, I've applied for one of the curatorships. Yes, I know. I wanted to talk to you about that. Have they considered my application? I'm afraid your application was not officially put before the committee. Why? Well, I'm not the one that decides these things, but after all that nonsense in the newspapers, it was not felt appropriate. That's it. Keep her level. That's it. There here she goes. Very good. Excellent. Keep coming. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Yes, of course. <clears throat> Good morning. Christopher Irwin and the Marine Chair. Oh, good morning to you, sir. Mr. John Jeffries at your service. And may I present Mr. John Harrison? The clockmaker. I'm very honoured to meet you. Uh, I take it this machine is intended for the taking of uh, lunar observations? Yes, impervious for the weather and the waves. <laughs> sir, it's my own invention. John! It's, uh, Simple, yet effective, and will completely solve the problem of the longitude. I've made two ready to sail to Barbados with the Reverend Masklin. Masklin? Yes. They said I should be here at midday. Mr. Bliss was most particular. Mr. Harrison? Oh, I can manage, Jeffries. Mr. Irwin? My lord, this is prevarication. If no astronomer is appointed, then the matter must be postponed. I humbly beg your in indulgence. Sir, we're aware that you've made various unsuccessful applications, and unsurprisingly, perhaps, no reputable man has agreed to waste his time on such an expedition. We should therefore move on to other matters. Lord, I must apologize 
for my late arrival. Mr. Harrison, we are discussing the matter of an astronomer to accompany the trial of your father's watch. Well, Lord, I have a proposal. Mr. Green at Greenwich. Oh, we have already covered this. Now, he did write to Mr. Green, but sadly, I spoke to him yesterday and he must decline. His recent duties at the observatory are extremely demanding. I can confirm this, my lord. I was there and Mr. Green was adamant. Lord, I've just come from Greenwich where I had the good fortune to speak myself with Mr. Green. I trust, Mr. Harrison, it's not your intention to question the word of two members of this board. No, my lord. But Mr. Green has kindly agreed to accompany me here. No, I certainly have never seen anything like it. Most extraordinary. It stays completely upright in any weather. I see. Mr. Green, what are you doing here? I'm not exactly sure, Reverend. It has been a most confusing morning. Christopher Irwin, the Marine Chair. Mr. Green. Excuse me. You wouldn't by any chance be the Reverend Masculin. What? My name is Christopher Irwin, and this is the Marine, Marine chair. chair. Yes, I think I'd gathered that. So, in principle, Mr. Green, you would be prepared to accompany the expedition. Yes, uh, but... But uh, what you are saying, I think, is that you would require permission from your superior. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, perhaps my colleagues and I could help you with that. Dr. Bliss, who exactly is Mr. Green's superior? You know perfectly well he works for me at the observatory. Then if you were to remove your objection, the matter may be settled. My lords, I believe the Reverend Neville Maskelyne would be a more suitable observer. His presence on the trial would allow us to test the lunar data he is compiling. I have here a copy of his new publication, The British Mariner's Guide. It contains an entry for the position of the moon at every day of every hour for the next three years. It enables with observation, the calculation at sea of the longitude. Very well, my lord. I propose that both Mr. Green and Mr. Maskelyne go. Can we all agree on that? Then the matter is settled. I think there may be one or two other points to clarify. We would like to see six equal altitude observations per day for three consecutive days. Impossible. You cannot get six observations a day at Greenwich, let alone the West Indies. Captain Campbell. He's right, my lord. Let it read as many as are practical. Very well. For as many as are practical. The watch must be submitted to me at the observatory for testing to determine its rate before the second trial. I'm not letting the watch out of my sight. We need to determine the rate. Captain Campbell, enlighten us. My lord, I think the rate should be determined by whoever is closest to the instrument, which must be Harrison. Provided that it is disclosed before the voyage starts, there is no possibility of dissimulation. We believe that the Reverend Masculine should travel on a different ship than the Harrison, so that he may have more time to set up his instruments for the observation of Jupiter's moons. Agreed. Agreed. Gentlemen, the Reverend Masculine will be in Barbados one month before you and will have everything prepared for your arrival. It remains for us to wish you every success aboard His Majesty's ship, Tata. successful voyage.